Hello everyone, welcome back to Growing Up with Godzilla. My name is Donnie Winter and this is my show where I have conversations with Godzilla fans about how they've grown with the character and franchise over time. We are, this, this is the season finale of, of season three of the show, which is hard to believe, but here we are. And I am really excited to have back on a very good friend of mine who has been on the show before, but it's been a while since he's been on. So I would like to welcome back none other than the ever so wonderful Monster Island Buddies. How are you? Hey, thank you for having me on. But enough about me, Donnie. I need to give you a public congratulations for having your wonderful poetry in the Godzilla 70th anniversary comic. What an achievement. I'm so jealous. <laughs> congratulations. Oh, you deserve it. Thank that will... You're going to make me emotional. Thank you so much. <laughs> that really means a lot to me. I st it's been, it's funny because it's been like a whole year since Matt and I were actually working on it. So like uh -huh. now that it's been a year, I'm kind of like, wow, that's so long ago now. It feels like it's. Yeah. And it's you know, new to all of us though. And I know. Yeah. What a surprise. What a pleasant surprise. Um, well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Anytime, anytime any of the, like uh, uh, the active community can touch, you know, an official <laughs> related project is always very special and and cause for uh, pomp and circumstance. Absolutely, I, <laughs> like I never fathomed that I would get the opportunity, but it happened. And um, I obviously thank Matt for opening that door for me. So nice. here's hoping I can do more comics in the future because I have a bunch of ideas up my sleeve, and hopefully, oh. as I send them out, like maybe the pasta will stick to the wall and something will happen. We'll see. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, well, it's been a while since we've spoken. Like, how have things? What have you been up to? I've been busy. Just, you know, still pumping out content uh, as much as I can um, for two reasons. One, I legit do like doing it to distract myself from anything else. And two, um, you know, sponsorship obligations and such require a certain amount of upload. So it's just busy, busy, busy trucking away at this. Oh my goodness. But you know what? The content is always great though. That's why we that's why we love and adore you as a fandom. So oh, and you bring like I think that you do such a good job creating a sense of community. And I don't oh, yeah. think that you get I don't I don't know if you're told that often, but I think you do. Um and I know as a, a I know as an LGBTQ plus fan, I always feel safe engaging uh -huh. with, with the community that you've created. So thank you for that. That really means a lot to me. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm glad to give a place. I, honestly, I like to me, inclusivity is like a no brainer thing. So one time I remember this years ago, not to go off track years ago, somebody else had asked me uh, on Twitter, you know, are you are you LG uh, BT uh, safe? Like, and mm -hmm. I just thought it was like, at the time that now I could appreciate like what that question meant to that person. But at the time, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, of course. Like, why wouldn't I be? <laughs> like, it's just right, obvious right. to me. And I, and I wish, you know, I slowly have learned it's not as obvious in other places in the world. And I just, you know, I wish it was. No, absolutely. I, <laughs> I and I, and I, I've also kind of experienced that too with other communities, like them, like asking me like, Hey, is this a safe space for, for me and others like me, and I'm like 1000%, yes. Yeah. And I think for those of us who never have to really deal with like certain levels of marginalization, it can be kind of like a shock, like, oh, wow, like, I guess I am kind of insulated in a certain way, right? Whereas, whereas like others may not have that luxury. So no, I think that's some, that's a great perspective. And yeah, again, commend you for being upfront about being that safety. I think that's so important. I do too. Um, I'm, I'm my place. <laughs> well, we're here to nerd out about Godzilla. Right? <laughs> Let's so do it. I like. I'm really excited to pick your brain as always because for my second round guests, I have a whole nother set of questions which you've probably already looked at. But the first thing that I really wanted to ask you, I mean, obviously we've had a huge Godzilla year, like the, the yes. last year and a half. <laughs> um, Godzilla minus one, Godzilla X Kong, winning an Oscar, yes. like so many phenomenal things they just announced a new Godzilla movie that they're working on Toho like yes <laughs> like what was your reaction to that were you like Twitter pated like me I was <laughs> <laughs> I buy by you know just I can never get enough <laughs> I know, <laughs> I mean, so. I, two movies a year was not enough for me I need more <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I totally get that too. Like, <laughs> like I appreciate that they're like letting it simmer. They're letting it like yeah. No, they're, I they're know. Letting that... it brew like a good wine. Wait, what, am I thinking of the right word? Brew. Brew like a beer. Brew uh, maybe beer. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I agree. Like ultimately, you don't want to fatigue out, and it's it's uh, I, I think you know. This was an aggressive year, but I, if they slow down the pace a little, like that makes sense. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna yell at them that I need something right away. <laughs> right. No, I. So I guess the big question to start out with would be, yeah. what has changed for you as a Godzilla fan over the years? Like, have you changed like any perspectives on the franchise, the characters, or anything? Oh yeah. Like that? No, I, I did. Um, I mean, minus one alone has just given. Godzilla a, a, a level of legitimacy he's never had before and um I I felt proud you know obviously um super proud being part of that felt like I backed the right horse all these years <laughs> but um something else you have to remember is like I'm like I got into Godzilla as a kid in the 80s and then the 90s and like the perception of Godzilla has been like you know it's the silly camp you know guys in suits wrestling around it's like bad dubbing you know a lot of like some 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 uh japanese ra- like light japanese racism kind of laced in there about mm-hmm. you know the culture and behavior um not for me sorry if that came out like it was come for me no no <laughs> no, no that means no, uh, <laughs> um but like that's that was godzilla at the time and then 98 was coming out and that was going to legitimize them in america as like a blockbuster Mm -hmm. and then it you know it just didn't um and so it's just it took a long time for like for for me and and all of us to be able to say with pride like godzilla is not just nonsense you know it, it if done well in good good hands it could be um it could be a wonderful period piece drama like an outstanding drama it could be beautiful poetry when it's given to Donnie. It could, it could, be, it could be anything. And um, I'm I'm very proud of that. Like that now the world is seeing that, you know, this is good storytelling possibilities all over. I think those are some excellent points. I think it also just proves that it's it's making people want more and more. Like I feel like yeah. there is a craving more for Godzilla. I don't really see any examples of people growing exhausted with the character i know that was some concerns that we had like early on in the year but i think winning the oscar and then like the subsequent trajectory has really like made people even more excited for more godzilla and and i like i've mentioned i've mentioned in prior episodes of the season specifically that i feel like godzilla's broken through like some sort of like a pop cultural threshold that is i think very significant now here's a slightly introspective question for you okay if you could go back in time to your younger self, okay, what valuable wisdom from the Godzilla franchise would you impart to younger you? <laughs> I'm going to give such an MIB answer. I would give younger me a list of the collectibles he should go to the store and buy. <laughs> so that I could have them one. today <laughs> in mint condition. <laughs> Because there was, there, I you know, I've loved Godzilla my whole life, but I didn't become a collector until like you know, when when my channel started expanding to other content was when I got heavy, and um, and I'm thinking about all the times in the '90s, like I saw Trendmasters Godzilla toys, and I was like, nah, <laughs> and like Imperial toys, and I was like, nah, and now it's like, man, I would love to get those and not pay hundreds on <laughs> eBay. <laughs> Would you would you have like the wisdom and ability to tell your younger self to not play with the figures? Would you be like keep them in their box? Ah, uh, no, I don't do that now. Okay, uh, <laughs> like I very rarely do. I I play with it now. So I would get on the floor with my younger self and play with them. Oh, would that not be like kind of trippy to experience? That'd be so trippy to experience. Like I kind of want to experience that because I feel like we would have such good. <laughs> conversations with their younger selves and they would probably be so excited that somebody else is actually invested in what they're excited about what they like right for sure because when when i was younger there was no internet so i didn't have the community really and i I know some fans found each other and in those early days of g-fest but i didn't know about any of that until way later so it was like me it was just me party of one (laughs) 
<laughs> right. No, I get that. I, I just, I have like this very innate memory of people being exhausted and or annoyed of me being excited over Godzilla. So like, uh -huh. I would want to go back in time and be like, oh, little Donnie, I'm excited about Godzilla. Let's talk about Godzilla. Let's talk about why you love Mothra so much. And then, uh -huh. be, I don't know. Wouldn't that be sweet? <laughs> just feel our inner child. <laughs> What a sweet, what a sweet mental image that is. <laughs> it's either sweet or just super cliche and cringy, but I'm okay with either. I'm fine with either too at this point. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I have a slightly um, interesting question for you about um, yeah. popular Godzilla films that you might like. So, okay, which largely, I would say, massively considered unpopular Godzilla film is your guiltiest pleasure? <sighs> do, you, do is versus Megalon considered unpopular? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know either. I think there are groups that are obsessed with that film. I feel like the film does kind of have a low key I, uh, cultural or a uh, cult following. Yeah, I, it, well, that's. Um, I find it like the most boring Godzilla movie up until the third act. Um, <laughs> and I and it's partially because it was my first Godzilla movie, so I was introduced to it as a very young kid. And all I wanted to see was Godzilla. So my first impression was like, get past all this garbage, get to Godzilla. <laughs> wait, wait, is this your unpopular Godzilla film that is your guilty pleasure? Or is it your unpopular Godzilla opinion? It, you know, it does sound like it's turning into a Godzilla opinion. No, it is my guilty pleasure. Um, I, I, I appreciate, like, as a kid... Um, you know, there's, I would sit. I would sit through it anyway. I didn't fast forward to Godzilla. I always sat through it. Um, and now it's become like I, I appreciate it on a different level. Like mm -hmm. I can understand behind the scenes. I want you know the craft that went into it, but also I could just appreciate how it connected me to Godzilla nostalgically. And um, and because of that, it was it's always going to have a special place in my heart. Even though, like, I seriously think it's personally the most boring Godzilla movie. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the beginning until the third act. <laughs> the, fir the first half is a little. I, I when I was a kid, I was always confused by it. I was just like, "What the hell is going on?" Like, yeah, are these what, underground the... people? Like, what? Like, what's happening? Like, oh, and you're watching. Like, I'm watching the the American dub, and it's like the kids' voice is just grating to me oh. <laughs> like in that dub. <laughs> so, right? No, absolutely. That was another issue I was having. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, well, now I'm going to be asking you about your unpopular Godzilla opinion because you know me, I like a little, little controversial for everybody. <laughs> so, what is your unpopular or controversial Godzilla um, opinion? Ah, oh, it's a tough one. <laughs> uh, I, I, I tend to wear my feelings on my sleeve about this stuff. Um, me too. Uh, I, I guess I would say. Um, well, this this is this, this is for a selfish reason, but like again, back to collecting. Like, I think there's too much stuff coming out constantly now, mm -hmm. and like, I'm proud that you know Godzilla that, that Godzilla is reaching the pop culture this way, and I'm like, I'm glad, you know, both in Japan and America, the, the license is going nuts, and that's fine. But like, it's crossed this this. <laughs> line and gone into this level of absurdity where there's just too much like there there's, like, is a there's lot. like 10 different blind bag boxes going on right now of Godzilla <laughs> I've spent so much money on Godzilla like I literally got that like little LED lamp did I need yeah. that no not. <laughs> but it was so cute and I was like I need some ambient background lighting for my videos Exactly. No, there, there is, I mean, it's funny <laughs> because I feel like, let's say like in 1998 or 2000, I feel like we would be preaching something way different. We would be like, oh yeah, oh my God, there's not enough. Oh my God. Like, like I did. a, a desert <laughs> of Godzilla. Yeah, no, I totally did uh, back then because it was a drought, you know, it was, a, it was the famous Godzilla drought. But, right. um, but like, like I said, it's a selfish reason. Like, I'm glad mm -hmm. everyone has options and access and more people have access to these things. Um, like, it's good. It's I, I'm not wishing it away. I just feel very overwhelmed. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> and every time I think, okay, wallet's closed and locked, no more. Like, they announce something just incredible that you would never think they would do. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta lock it up right when all those things are coming out. I know. Um, 
it's interesting. So uh, my controversial slash unpopular Godzilla opinion right now is not anything to do with the films. It's about okay. the video games. Okay. And I don't know, like, uh, this might be a popular opinion. I'll, I'll gauge your reaction. Okay. I don't think a decent Godzilla game has come out since Godzilla Unleashed. And I'm mad about it. Um, I, I, I personally really like the PS4 game. Oh, so it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. That I, enjoyed. I, I don't think Go there's ahead. anything else, like, even to yeah. compare to. I don't think there was any other game, <laughs> unless I'm forgetting something. So maybe, oh, okay, so I guess it might be a popular opinion in the sense that I'm just angry that we don't have more Godzilla video game content. Oh, yeah, I think I think that's a pretty popular sentiment. I mean, um, I'm, I've been starting this video on... Um, just a list that's going to show every single Godzilla appearance in another video game, and that includes mobile. And that video from like like ninety eight percent of the list, the very long list, is post Shin Godzilla, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like mobile game, mobile game, mobile game, mobile game. Some exclusive in Japan, some came to America, but he's showing yeah. up everywhere except in his own game, and it's make, making me crazy as well. Do you want to hear something wild? Oh, yeah. I'm probably going to get a vis. I'm going to get eviscerated by everybody listening to this. Okay. I have not played a single one of the mobile games. <gasps> oh no! That's. I wish I didn't play a single one. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, they're, they're mostly like nothing burgers, but then you know, Battle Line's cool, but it's also infuriating because it's at the end of the day a pay-to-win gotcha game. Yeah, um, I, I strongly believe, but it's still like every once in a while you could squeeze some actual like honest fun out of it. I think um, like, it, it's kind of an atrocity that I haven't because I loved Pokemon Go so much and still yeah. do. Like, there's no reason why I couldn't play or shouldn't play a Godzilla mobile uh, game. So don't start. Don't start. <laughs> don't, do, don't do it, Donnie. Don't I would recommend not it. starting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so here's an interesting question for you. Uh, um, if given the power, what Godzilla film would you want to create? Or what direction would you take the franchise if you had the ability to control it? Explain oh, why. I've, I've, anytime I've been asked this question, I've always talked about like a post-apocalyptic world where the monsters already destroyed everything and the rest mm. of human life has turned into like a zombie apocalypse film, but with, with kaiju, basically. And I always imagine some like someone stumbles across like a, a old destroyed mecha Godzilla that they jerry rig back together. And I've had that idea like for so long that it's like growing to a point when it's like if I find the time, I would sit down and write it myself just for fun. You know, just put a fan script together. I don't know. You could submit a comic book proposal. Do it. <laughs> uh, offline, you're going to have to teach me how. Well, I'm myself. I don't know how much help I'll be, but I would gladly <laughs> render any assistance. Maybe we could collaborate. <laughs> I would love to do, um, I mean, if we're talking about what I would like to do, like any of those ideas are fun, but honestly, like I would love to do like, um, almost, I don't want to do like a Godzilla and comic, like something lighter, something where they could talk and I could have fun with it. Like Monster Island Buddies, but not so R-rated. <laughs> <laughs> And like There's more an audience for the R rated too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like I think that's the best place like to put someone like me. <laughs> but, no. <laughs> but no, oh my god. I I I I I used to like just screenwrite because I like screenwriting and you know I'd print it and put it in a bookshelf and forget about it. And I would like love even just for me as a fan, just love to have time to write a Godzilla script. See what it would look like uh. if I if I gave it a try. I think you should do it. I think you I think should, I should do it. Absolutely. Got a, I've got like a stack of like projects, like the if I have time project list. <laughs> we always have that, don't we? Yeah. Like I just, I have like a Word document of like all the different projects and ideas that I want to do. That's a good and idea. And I like for Godzilla, like comic book proposals, I have like 25 of them. And I'm like, I don't need, I've only <laughs> sent in like two proposals. So I'm like, how am I going to put together all of these other ones? My bandwidth needs ten days. Well, you, <laughs> if you ever want to bounce anything around, you know, send something over. Um, to. Writer to writer. <laughs> Ooh, we need like the writers in this fandom need to stick together. Damn it, hey, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> just do. Well, here here is a purely 
this is just a question that I like to just absorb whenever people okay. can answer. <laughs> sure. Um, which scene in a Godzilla film shook your younger self and does it still have the same impact on you? I've got to be younger self. I feel like I've been shook more as an adult watching Godzilla. <laughs> well, I guess as an adult, <laughs> what scene has shook you the most? Oh, I can answer that easy. Um, minus one when he tells him to live like Ooh. that gets me every time it's beautiful it is the most beautiful thing i've ever seen in a godzilla movie um yeah. and i know i keep i keep like showering minus one with accolades but like it's the first godzilla movie since the first godzilla movie that i think is a, a, a good movie like not just a good godzilla movie like it's a good movie right it um, covers all the bases yeah so that would be my adult answer. Uh, I don't, it was like, you're not really going to get shook watching Son of Godzilla. Uh, or maybe, maybe in the snow part at the end as a kid, that maybe that was a little sad. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, I got an answer. I got an answer. Okay. <laughs> so I mentioned that Versus Megalon was the first Godzilla movie I saw. Um, versus Mothra was number two or three. It was early. And it was the first one I ever saw where Godzilla was a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there was no internet again. So I, there's not, there was no resource to sort out what order these movies came out and how many there were. Um, and I was very upset when they webbed Godzilla, when he lost. <laughs> when he <went> <laughs> I jumped him in the water. Like, I was like, why is it? It would be like watching a movie and like Spider-Man loses. <laughs> No, I was, I remember, so I tell people this all the time. I used to be so angry and hateful toward Mothra when I was, like, a child. Really? Because I was, like, I was, like, two caterpillars beat Godzilla. Uh, what the <laughs> hell is going on here? You know? Same. But, but, then, but now that I'm older, I'm just, like, you get him, children. Like, defend <laughs> your mother. Like, I want to help you. Like, let's wrap this big-ass dinosaur up and toss him in the ocean right now. Um, <laughs> But no, like, I think that's a, that's a really good one. I have one. Um, yeah, so I watched The Return of Godzilla recently. I think it was for celebrating Godzilla's anniversary. Because that's kind of the one that I tend to go to nowadays. I, I will rewatch The Return of Godzilla because I love the Heisei era. Uh -huh. And I just, that first scene in the boat mm. with the creepy ass, disgusting bug thing the bug but, uh, thing it was like i remember as a kid i could not watch that i was too terrified to watch yeah that. Wow. and now that i'm older i'm like well that's kind of like a very classic 80s horror practical effects like scene and i'm like they did good they did uh, good with that like i was like okay like that really made me feel disgusting when i was a kid so that's a good answer too i would have never thought about that like, I suppose they, well, that whole film just has, like, shocking things for me as a kid. The other thing yeah. would be, like, at the end, like, I was shocked that they that Godzilla fell into Mount Mahara. Like, I, mm. I still get super emotional over that scene. But I remember when I was a kid and I watched that, I sobbed and I sobbed. And I, my parents literally would hide that movie from me. Wow. Because they did not want to deal with their mentally unstable child. <laughs> <laughs> not that it turned out any better, but, you know, that's besides the point. Yeah. Um No, but there are so many scenes that shake us. I didn't. Um, I didn't really do a lot of rewatching of '85 when when uh, when I was a kid. I, re I remember. I distinctly remember renting it, and I was young. And I'm sorry if this is sex. Maybe this is my my disgusting take. <laughs> but, but like as like a five or six year old, I legitimately enjoyed the versus Bambi short before it more than the. <laughs> The versus Bambi short was wild. Yeah, yeah. When when Godzilla eighty five was on videotape, for whatever reason, it was packaged like right before the movie starts. There's the very there's a short called Godzilla versus Bambi. Mm -hmm. And you've never seen this? Oh no, I've seen that. I remember. Okay, it very yeah, well. yeah, okay. yeah. It, it, it's hilarious. <laughs> well, like, when I was a kid, like I was always like, <gasps> oh no. <laughs> Like I wanted, I showed everybody. Like I passed it around like a meme, but like with a VHS, because <laughs> that's how you had to do it. An but, '80s meme. That's what memes came up as back then. Yeah, it totally upstaged the movie. I'm sorry for whoever that might insult. I, you know, obviously I appreciate the movie more now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, as a kid, you tend to gravitate toward those things, right? Absolutely. Like, I, <laughs> like I'm always going to be honest. <laughs> I would not have it any other way, honestly. <laughs> well, so I do have one last question for you. Sure. Um, and like, honestly, like, there are so many people who like are aware of Godzilla and they might have friends who are trying to get them into Godzilla, but may, they may not know really how to enter yeah. um, being a Godzilla fan. So, right. So let's pretend that a person wants to get their friends into Godzilla. Like what advice do you have for them regarding how they should start? Um, I mean, I, I, we're, let's pretend also Godzilla minus one's not a thing. Cause that's such an easy answer now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I always, I always recommend um, Godzilla versus King Ghidra because it has everything. Like it has, uh, it's not, you know, it's not obnoxiously long. It has Godzilla, King Ghidra, Rodan, Mothra, um, and it's the only movie where Godzilla has a character arc. <laughs> mm -hmm. so that's always interesting. That's true. And you get a little bit of everything in that one because it wasn't like full camp yet, but it was getting there. <laughs> it was starting. <laughs> it has some, it has such memorable scenes, though. Yeah, I always think that like if if someone was interested in the old school stuff, I always recommend that one. Um, just, but if they're oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say like if for more serious efforts i would recommend the original movie because i just like i said earlier i think it's a, just a good movie mm -hmm. absolutely i think i think at this point now that godzilla has become so versatile we have very good selections like i even think like introducing somebody to godzilla minus one as like their first godzilla film i think that would even now be a good like solid like hey you want to get somebody into like the lore of godzilla and like the the heaviness of like the historical context, like this would be a great option to take, right? So yeah. Shin Godzilla, I think, I think would, would be a good one too, but like there's so much like context surrounded like surrounding like the Fu the Fukushima power plant and stuff like that. that yeah. I think people would need to know before going into that. But you know, still. I the trick is this. You have to recommend a movie because you, you know a new person at some point is going to like wrecking like realize that Godzilla's not in the movie a lot. And, <laughs> and if they're getting you have to recommend a movie where they can get through that and not mm. feel bored and not say where is Godzilla. <laughs> like, so right. that's the trick. <laughs> yeah, that no that is probably some really good advice. <laughs> right? But then once Godzilla emerges they'll be like what is happening? Like yeah, exactly. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we just introduced somebody the other day to the Kawakita beam spam concept. I mean, like, what were we? Was it the last episode? I don't know. It was one of the episodes you were talking about, like, the Heisei era and beam spamming and how it was, like, uh, and how Shin Godzilla kind of brought that back, like, the beam spamming. Yes, yes. <laughs> I miss beam spamming. I'm not going to lie. I, I never had a problem with it. I, I like the Heisei era just as much as the show era. <laughs> I, know. I love me a good beam spam. For real. Um, <laughs> but you, you, what you said earlier, um, and I'm sorry I forgot the context, but you said something along the lines of a very awesome truth that, like, right now there's a Godzilla for everybody. Yeah. Like, there's serious, there's fun, there's goofy, there's cartoon, there's, you know, drama, there's everything. Yeah, that's something that we should celebrate because I feel like, again, that's just another example of Godzilla breaking through that threshold where. Now we're able to celebrate him more. Like there's more of a household name presence. Mm. I think Godzilla's always had this staying power where people are aware of the character. Like, yeah. But I think, like you were saying earlier in the episode, like Godzilla minus one very much legitimized Godzilla to so many people. Yeah. And I think that above all else is what we should be celebrating because we've waited so long for that. And I cannot begin to tell you how many times as a kid I had people look at me and be like, Godzilla. <laughs> like, you mean like two people fighting in a suit? And now I'm like, now I can defend that and be like, this is a beautiful art form being kind of reclaimed now, right? Right. But now we can at least celebrate the diversity that is... Yes, and kind of going by what I was saying earlier as well, like you can say Godzilla and like in the 80s, people would immediately just start making fun of the dubs in like terrible Japanese accents. So mm -hmm. like 
uh, now that's gone. Like, you know, that's not the association anymore. And mm-hmm. um, that yeah. also makes it a great time for me. <laughs> yeah, there's so Finally much lose more respect. That. Yeah. There's so much more respect. Yeah. Well, I, I just always enjoy talking to you. Like... <laughs> Yeah, no, I I love it too. Um, I'll we'll come back anytime you want. Like, just, I, I don't go on a lot of podcasts, so, but Which I, I enjoy talking to you because like you're so <laughs> prolific, right? But um, no, like it's always an honor to have you on, and thank you for all you do in this fandom. Oh, and thank you. Um, yeah, so everyone watching, thank you for watching throughout this entire season. I feel like it's really taken off this season, and it really means a lot to me. Stay tuned for 2025 because there's a lot more to come. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget the show premieres on the first and third Sunday of every month. Subscribe to our respective channels. Hit like for the algorithm. You know, all the, all the <laughs> usual stuff. Um, and don't forget, keep standing tall, my friends. Have like a good it. rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye.